Lord, everybody. Amen. All right. Wow. I have a great word from the Lord. Lift your hands and let's pray for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. God is amazing. The devil is defeated. And his friends are stupid. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know that, right? Yeah. How many know there's some crazy people in the world? <laughs> Lift your hands and say, I rebuke all of them in Jesus' name away from me. Yes. If you have the wrong people in your life, you have a circle of foolishness. Now, we're going to work on that here. I see a lot of young people, young men. I love you guys. All the ladies, all the people of every age. I'm going to help you in these few moments. We're going to go into some deep waters here. Are you ready? Yeah. Not some doctrinal, mystical. I don't have time for that. I'm very practical. How many want to hear some practical things from the Lord? Practical ways that you can have your life to become a shining fire for the kingdom of God. And that you can be blessed in every way. I don't know what it is when I read scripture, <laughs> the Lord just begins to give me insight into what it means, though. There are familiar passages of scripture that we know, like I'm going to get into Psalm 23. I just found it here. I'm amazed at what the Lord has shown me about this. But let's lift our hands and pray right now. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the spirit of the Lord that makes people successful, Amen. makes people powerful. Isaiah 48, 17 says, You are the Lord our God. The great prophet Isaiah heard this and spoke this from your own mind and heart to the world and to us 3,000 years later. Nearly 3,000 years later, this word is still ringing true. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and who leads you in the way you should go. Moses wrote in Deuteronomy 8.18, I give you power to get wealth. To do what? To make, manage, and multiply resources to establish my covenant. See, the covenant is the real thing. And Jehovah Jireh, <coughs> the name of Yireh, Jireh, Yireh, a, a Hebrew definition is this. I know we call it like the Lord our provider and he gives us money to live on. No, it's much more than that. It's... Uh, I am the father, your overseer, the overseer of your life, who sees your future and will see to it that it happens. So the resources we experience along the way is the see to it factor. God is seeing to it that we succeed. There's all kinds of wealth. There's people wealth. There's equipment. There's ideas. There's knowledge. There's wisdom. There's physical cash. There's property. There's operations of administrations we need all of those things lift your hands i prophesy over this house my dear friend here the general and his wife his precious wife there and everybody and all the blessed people that this place will become a powerhouse glorious movement Amen. in this nation Amen. i prophesy right now Amen. that this will become a wow the anointing just fell on me right here this will become a powerful movement through Amen. you son and you're going to see my hand, says the Lord, Amen. in ways you, you it's like, it's like God has prepared you very well for this time. Amen. I see that. We don't know. We just met recently and we talked a bit, I, but I can see that God has brought you through many things of developing yourself into a realm of maturity. Now God says he's going to put the weight of the apostolic glory upon your shoulders and you're going to produce a movement that's going to go beyond here and everywhere. It's going to go everywhere. Amen. And it's going to be astounding what I'm going to do. Amen. This is that season of elevation. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Lift your hands. But how many can feel the presence of God is moving already? You know, when you see a real prophet, a prophet, not P R O F I T. Isaiah 48, 17, but P-R-O-P-H-E-T, a real man of God who's a prophet. 
will always carry certain things from heaven. God has developed me into the governmental realm of the office of the prophet. Take your sheets, take your sheets. And, uh, bless the babies in the back, Lord, I hear them there. This is a vibrant place. A lot of babies. And I saw that Ethiopian kid, where's he? He was here the other day. And I started to talk to him, he goes, he goes like this, the baby's only this big. He goes, I don't do English. And he walks like this. I was like, boy, this kid is tough. He's only about three years old. Look at him, he's already like a wild man, you know? I like these people. Ethiopians are wild, I'm telling you. Kenyans are wild too, you see what's going on. But we need to become more wild about aggressive behavior to move on in the purpose of God. How many are, how many are tired of where you are right now in life? You just, you, just, you just know you're not where you're supposed to be. God has much more, and I'm going to talk about that. So the prophet, the prophet will carry things to like release promotion, release fire over regions and cities, and God's used me in the nation of Kenya and many nations to release things that bring about change. You see the super highway? You see the new expressway? Yes? Hello? How many don't speak English? You couldn't raise your hand because you wouldn't know what I just said. Okay. <laughs> if you didn't, you wouldn't know what I just said, so no hands. Okay. Hit your neighbor, say, open your ears big. Come on, I don't have a microphone. I'm not, I can shout a little bit, but hit your neighbor and say, hey, open your, eye, open your ears and your mind. All right, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and, the, and the SCR trains and the new buildings and developments and all this we prophesied. Amen. Amen. And when God sees a man that is ready for a promotion, he'll send a prophet. I'm telling you, or an apostle. See, the apostles and the prophets work together. We complement each other. Guess what? The church is not built on the pastor and the evangelist or the teacher or the church worker or the deacons. Or it's on the apostles and prophets. Ephesians 2.20 said the foundation of the church is the apostles, is on the apostles and the prophets of which Jesus is the chief cornerstone. So without apostles, and I heard a prominent bishop talk of his, uh, a very seasoned elder in the, in the church world, a real father in the land. He was speaking about this. He, he told all the pastors, y'all are failing a week because you don't have apostles and prophets. You're not, you don't have real apostles and real prophets. Every Sunday is like if you're an evangelist, it's like another evangelistic crusade, in, but in a building. If you're just a pastor, you just have one level of a gift. But the apostles and the prophets were higher. Hello? And they carry fire. Higher and they carry fire. Lift your hand and say, I'm receiving that fire today. I'm By the Holy Ghost. So the moments we have here today, God's going to release something from heaven. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Let's pray a minute. Kara Mashala Esolo Shokotela Farandele. Father, thank you for your son here, your, your precious son and his wife. Thank you for the people. Thank you for what you're doing. I'm seeing a few things that I don't feel it's right to say now, but I'll, sh I'll share later. Wow. But there's so much expansion coming. And people need to understand from God that he's very practical. He'll teach you how to profit. He'll teach you how to prosper. He'll lead you in the way you should go. He'll lead you into the people and the places and the things that he wants you to be in, that you're, where you'll flourish. There's a gift in you that has to flourish. And if it's not like f fully moving, something is blocking the way. It could be people. It could be demons. It could be the wrong environment. The environment that you have matters a lot. The Lord spoke to me and said, son, tell my people this. Uh, your environment 
will either pollute you or promote you, depending on what it is. So if you have the wrong situation around you, and I'm in a season right that, of that right now, where God is adding so many people to me. It's phenomenal. Can I tell you, if you have a vision, you need to find the right people. Young men, you need to be with the right people. If you see someone that's wrong, they're dull, they're blocking the way, they're in foolishness or they're in sin or they're doing what, move from them. And even go with older people than yourself. You could be in your peer group of your age, but find people that have wisdom and begin to say, I'm different, I'm going to learn, I'm going to go into high places. You know, people that become wealthy and successful, they don't um, hang around, they don't, they don't waste their time. Hello? Now, part of this I'm going to teach, but part of it I'm prophesying. And uh, I, I want to prophesy that God will just catapult you now to another place, Amen. another level in life. Amen. Lift your hands if you, can receive, you want to receive that. And Father, this will happen. This will happen even from today. Even from today. <coughs> And I don't care what's going on in the land, the problems that are going on politically and the unrest and all that. You could, do, you could still have every day to be productive. I prophesy right now, my name is Thomas Manton IV. That's my name. I'm God's servant. But Jesus is the giver of life. And he's in, the Holy Spirit is in me, God himself, speaking. I say it this week. I'm telling you, and this is real to me. As real as it is to me, it'll be real to you. This week, right now coming, today is Sunday morning. You're going to see some new people come to you. You're going to get irritated about certain people that are around you that are just not helping you enough. You're going to feel the stir up, the shake up. God is going to begin to convict you. Don't, don't chase it away and say, well, that's negative. No, take it. Be a real man. Be a real woman if you're a woman. I me, mean, I'm a real man. I'm a king. Because he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the God of gods. Jesus said, don't you know that ye are God? Psalm 82 said, we stand in the congregation and judge among the, the mighty. I'm a, I'm a, and ye are gods, the psalmist said. Small g, small g. Now that goes back to Genesis 1. 26 where, there's that kid, there he is, my little friend there, hey baby, hallelujah, hi, he's waving at me, I like that guy, praise the Lord, Amen. how do I say it, I don't know, you teach me some in your, in your language, I want to learn some words, and teach me some Ethiopian, I learn more Swahili, praise the Lord, Amen. yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm Jumbo. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, uh, hmm. What was I saying? Kings, lords, and gods. Are you kidding me? Who told us that? Are you kidding me? People told you you're like nothing. You're just there to live in poverty, to live in some messy situation. Whatever your family did, that's what you do. Come on. You have to resign from that. Lift your hands. Say, I resign from all foolishness. Even if it's in my own house. Oh, I'm going to step on it now. Where are your toes? I'm going to step on your feet here. Oh, yeah, that's what it, you do to the devil, you know. Luke 10, 19 said what? You tread upon serpents and scorpions and, and put them under your feet and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. <coughs> Who shall I fear? Nobody. <coughs> In the Bible, 365 times, we see do not be afraid. It's amazing. That's one for every day of the year. 365 times, fear not. Do not be afraid. 365 times. That means every day is there. And God has not given us fear. He gives us power. Amen. Right? 
Not even talking about love and a sound mind. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about those right now. Just say power. Power, power to do what? To overcome everything. Yes. To rule the world. And Genesis one twenty six again said what? I want you to have dominion. <coughs> right? Yes. Okay, let's look at Psalm twenty three. You have your Bibles or your this? See, I got my Bible. In my phone. Okay, I'm reading from the Amplified. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, think through my mind, speak through my lips what's on your mind and heart for the church. And let us be empowered today in Jesus' name. The Lord is my shepherd, number one. The Lord, number two. He's my shepherd. <coughs> number three, he will feed me and guide me and shield me. And I shall not lack. I found this one down, this verse down further. Verse uh, second to last verse. It says, "You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies." Now, who has enemies? You know who? Someone say who? Who has enemies? Who? Somebody that's doing something. If you don't have a lot of enemies, you haven't done anything. God said all the enemies could be out there because you're so powerful, you're stirring everything up. But I'll make a table before you in front of all of them. Amen. Lift your hands and say, I'm going to sit at my table. <laughs> in the presence of every enemy. Someone said, I have too much warfare going on. Good then there's something valuable about your life. You know, the devil doesn't show up for nobodies. He'll leave you alone. The thief only comes to a loaded vault where there's treasure. So if there's interest in you from the world and the other world, it means you have something great in you. But guess what? God has given us power over all of them. We're seated high above all principalities and powers. The devil's not over my head, by my side, behind my back. He's under my feet. Amen. Do it again. Stupid devil. Stupid Lucifer. He's an idiot. Hello. Hi. Now, now in Meru, you say idiot. In Nigeria, you say idiot. In Nigeria, they're very funny. <laughs> Shut up, you idiot. <laughs> I told the keyboard man to say that. He said it, and everybody laughed. I said, ah, say it for me one more time. Say it one more time. Shut up, you idiot. Idiot. <laughs> in Meru, they say, idiot. They put N in front of everything. You say, what day are you coming? Tuesday. They say, Tuesday. Tuesday. They can't say it without the N. And Luos, Luos, they say what? They, they can't say the H. They say, yeah, the fist was good. Fist. Fish. I'm like, fist? What's fist? You know the thing from the lake, you know, tilapia from the lake. Oh, oh fish, fish. Fist. Yeah, fist, they say. It. And one guy said to me, I went to the SOP, but the SOP was closed. What? SOP? Oh, you mean shop, the shop. Yeah. And then he goes, okay, Twanani Queso. <laughs> what? Queso. Twanani Queso. A Luo guy. It's a true story. I was like, what? And somebody's, when they want to say, excuse me, they say, and choose me. <laughs> and and choose. I was like, what? How do you spell that? E N C H O O Z? And choose me. Yeah. And biblical, you can't say biblical, it's biblical. There's no I there, it's B-I-B-L-I-C-A-L. Biblical, say biblical, everybody say it. Bib no, you see somebody, she did it, I heard it. You, I heard it, biblical, I heard it. Lord bless that woman, yeah. Anyway. The power of your speech is so powerful. That, that's fun, that's fun stuff about the way people are. It's, it's unique and it's amusing. Even God, I think he's amused by it. Yeah? He really did a good job in Numbers 11 when he 
came down to the Tower of Babel and he said, all you're going to speak different languages now. Go! You can't do this thing. Because they were one together and they were going to speak. And the thing that they devised, even against the Lord, his plan was going to happen because they were together. So God divided them up. And boy, they, their languages, oh my God, everywhere, everybody has a different language. Lift your hands and say, praise the Lord for all the different languages. But the main thing is, is I have to talk right. I have to speak right. So your, your speech, let me, let me give you something, write this down. My speech is so powerful that I can change everything through what I say. That's why the word of the prophet, with the anointing upon it, upon the, the prophet, speaks and things begin to be created. God created the heavens and the earth, right? By his word, the word of his power. So first of all, you got to start to speak right. Now go back to uh, verse 2. No, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I'm reading for the Amplified. Psalm 23. I shall not lack. I shall not lack any good thing. One of the names of God is Jehovah Shalom. And I found out Shalom is really amazing. It has three meanings. Bishop has three meanings. It says he's the Lord our peace. Okay, that, we know that one already. But it also means he's the destroyer of chaos. Amen. And it also means to have a life where nothing is broken and nothing is missing there. That's shalom. Jaira, I told you. See, we need to study the names of God, the, na the nature of God. He's our Father who sees our future and will see to it that it happens. Write this down, five Ds. Five Ds, the D, the D words, I want to tell you. Number one, it's about your life. You discern what it is you're called to do, which discern has to do with sight. Seeing. Number two, you discover what it is you're supposed to be doing through the process of discovery. Number three, you decide, you make the decision to what? The next D, do it. And then it becomes your destiny. Lift your hand and say, from today, everything's going to change for me. Now, I realize as much as I'm trying to teach here, I don't want to go too much into this, but I want to just stay real simple and practical. But I'm prophesying over you. Lift your hands right now. And say, Lord, I receive the touch of heaven. Everything can change in one minute for you. Nairobi is a great city. And destined to be a great city. <laughs> in fact, the Lord said to me, it's going to be the New York City of Africa. This, this town right here. And it's already happening. Do you know the move against corruption now? Everybody's mad. Everybody's out there, right? It's wild what's going on. Do you know I prophesied eight years ago. I was just on the phone with one of my people this morning. And uh, well, one of my television directors. But he's on the other side of the country now. He's on the coast. Doing a big pro Building a studio there and all that. And he said... Uh, he, he, he said to me something about this, this thing going on. And I was reminded by the Spirit of the Lord that I had prophesied this in the this, in this city, uh, walking with a camera through the streets. You'll, I have to find that video. It's on video. And I said, God says he's releasing an anti-corruption movement in the nation of Kenya from heaven. Now, all of a sudden, what happened? All of a sudden, whoo, the people just rise up. From where did they come? How did it happen? And guess what? A wrong system, I don't want to say too much, I don't want to say anything about politics here, because I'm, I'm from America, so I don't care anyway. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I shouldn't care too much, but I care about what God is saying. So I'll tell you this. A corrupt system will never fix itself. Did you get that? Let me see your hand. Uh -huh. A corrupt system will never correct itself, ever. It'll never happen. You'd be crying, oh God, 
why aren't the things done? And what about the government? And what about people? And what are they doing? And business people and con artists and liars and crooks and, 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 and all these things in the, in, the, in the world, in the society. They'll never change themselves. They'll only change by pressure that came from heaven. Lift your hand and say, somehow it's happening. And that's the way it is in your life. I want to give you a very practical thing right now. Very practical. God will stir your nest to the point that you're so uncomfortable that you can't, you can't leave it like it is. Lift your hand and say, I received that. Now, that's a, that's a good prophecy because it'll help you. You know, the mother eagle, if you study the life of the eagle, the eagle bird, they take the little eaglet and they... They, uh, they put sharp sticks in the side of the nest. Eh? And then when the eaglet, the little baby is there, comfortable, just sitting there, waiting for mama to come bring it food. And then it comes time for it to move into a greater uh, phase of life. Meaning to get up and fly and do its own thing. Do you know what happens? The mother eagle will push the baby into the sharp sticks. Boom, boom. And the baby's like, ah! Mom, what are you doing to me? You're hurting me. Finally, the eaglet gets so disturbed that it will stand on the edge of the nest and jump and try to fly. And it's then the eagle has to fly, the eaglet has to fly or die. But it'll put out its wings by the grace of God, the way God created the animal, and just fly and find something new to do. Lift your hands. It happens like that in our life. Do you know an eagle will redecorate its nest every year? They won't stay there. They'll build a new nest somewhere else. Even their beak, uh, their beak they, they have to go hit it on a rock at some point to break it off, and a new one grows. I don't know why God did all this. Even there's a, a kind of crab, it's called the, uh, the, sp the spider crabs or, or something on the bottom of the ocean. And they'll go there to shed off their shell. Do you know the shell that they have as they begin to grow? The shell becomes too big, too small, I mean, and it's tight. So they'll actually go there and they'll do this and expand in pain to crack the shell and then they'll step out of it. But by that time already, there's a new skin growing on it to build a bigger shell. Huh? Can you Even a crab in the ocean, I, I studied this, I said, oh my God. Creation is always looking for growth. Nature even abhors a vacuum. You know, if you have a hole and then water is running, what does the water do? It'll go into the hole, fill it to the top, and then keep moving. And then Jesus said, your cup will run over. Amen. Everything will run over. Everything will be in abundance. Meaning the vessel you have is too small to contain. It keeps pouring. Like when God told the, the prophet, uh, the prophet told the lady, I mean, Elisha, go borrow vessels, not a few. Not a few. Meaning as many as she could have, they could be filled up. Because supernatural oil was going to flow. So your life has to be ready for growth. A dear wise friend of mine who's gone to heaven, a great, great servant of the Lord who was my personal friend, and if I said his name, you'll know. I'm not going to start going and naming names here. But uh, he said something powerful. He said, God does not promote you because of prayer. He doesn't promote you because of fasting. He doesn't promote you by you loving God, even reading your Bible. Although we should do all those things, yes? Hello? We should pray, we should fast, <laughs> fast, and we should read our Bible, and we should study. But you know, you know why God promotes a man or a woman? Because of management. You're managing your life so well that God says, now I can entrust you with more. Amen. Lift your hands, say, that's for me. When you manage your life well, God can promote you. 
And promotion doesn't come from here or there, the Bible says, the south or the north, or the east or whatever, the west, whatever it said. It said I think it's Psalm 75. It's, I think it's in Psalm 75. I think so. We'll find it. But uh, it said promotion comes from the Lord. There's a kind of favor that a man gets when he finds a wife. Hello? Yeah. Special favor that he could not have any other way. It's a blessing from finding the, the connection. There's a favor given. The man could pray for that favor and never get it. Because God said in his word, this comes by this. So you, you, one thing that will happen when God begins to challenge you to go to a higher level, you're going to feel very uncomfortable. You're going to say, ah, oh, this, no, this, no, this, I got to, I got to. That's good. It'll make you wake up earlier. Hello? Hello. Some people wake up at five in the morning. I wake I have one guy tell me he wakes up at 3 in the morning to pray. And then he goes into his day. I said, yo, yo, you're a psycho. Are you kidding me? 3 in the morning. I'm just finding my way to sleep at that time, maybe later. I go all day, all night, sleep a few hours into the morning, I wake up. I'm not getting up at 5 a.m. No, this is, I'm talking for myself, okay? I'm not a 5 a.m. guy. <laughs> I'm an all-day guy. I sleep when I can. 5 a.m. I got to wake up at 5 o'clock. I'm like, boy, you're really something, aren't you? I salute you. In Jesus' name. Yeah? You're really... <laughs> but I'll tell you, you won't want the sun to be burning and you're still sleeping if you're on fire with a vision. You'll wake up earlier. You'll move more. You'll work more. You'll work all day. You'll work all night. And don't complain about it. Fa yes, Lord, I'll do it. Oh, wow. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, I thank you that you're going to speak to people about what their specific gift is. What the purpose is. And to create the environment. You know, there's another analogy of the animal's kingdom. Where a fish, if you put it in a small bowl, it's a very horrible way to analogize this, but <clears throat> if it was just this and I put some little fish in here, maybe they were going to grow big, like this big. But how many know this is small? It's, they can only stay small. They can't grow beyond this. They'll die. It would be unkind of God to allow them to grow bigger than the space. So when you create a bigger space, now you see the same fish that stayed small in here <coughs> in a bigger place would grow bigger. It just happens naturally. Why? Because there's a bigger environment. And some people, they live in these little houses. You know, one of my houses, one of my houses, a person came to do some work and they got scared. They were literally in fear. They thought the house was too big. I was like, what? Are you too big this? I was shocked. They were like, they didn't know where to go, which way to turn, which way. I said, oh, my God. If you think this place is big, you should see what I'm looking at next. <laughs> and then another one of my houses in America, I had a guy come and he walked through my house and, you know, he's a, he's a preacher. I never saw him again after that. He got short-circuited. He was like, oh, how some people live. Oh, my God. Because my master bedroom was like the size of, a, of, of, of an apartment. I thought, this is normal. Big jacuzzi, big shower, glass shower, long marble counter top all the way, you know. And long mirrors and big, two walk-in closets, one on either side. I'm like, what? This is normal. Where am I going to put my stuff? Where am I going to put me? In the bedroom or in the bathroom what? And the same guy didn't know that I was looking at houses up further up, uh, up, up the uh, other part of the town that were over like a million dollars and they were astounding. I thought, if you think this is big where I am here, you should see what I'm looking at next. One of the houses came with a Corvette, a Corvette, of, uh, it's like a little race car. I tried to get in, I couldn't get in. I said, this car is junk, man. I can't even get in. I tried to sit down, you know, open the door. I get then I'm trying to push my legs under the steering wheel and 
I got stuck. And I was still turned like this. I said, yo, help me out. The Corvette, can't take it. Some people like him, but you have to be a little bit shorter than me. <coughs> nice car, but I can't fit in it. Lift your hands, say, enlarge my space, Lord. Enlarge oh, yes. You see here, I don't know what you're going to do. The church is already full. It's so completely full. It's okay for now, but there's bigger things. When a man grows on the inside, when a woman grows on the inside, the physical need for a bigger place and expression of life will come. Lay your hands on yourself and say, Lord, that's for me. Now I want to prophesy that you will know exactly what the gift of God is in your life. Lift your hands and close your eyes to the Lord. I mean, you, are, you may already know, but God will show you more about it. Amen. And then once you know exactly what it is He's ordained, He'll begin to add new projects to you based on that thing. And He'll begin to speak. I'll tell you, uh, man of God, I, the Lord's been talking to me every day about projects. It's too much. Thank God I have recorders. I have one, I have a microphone in this pocket and I have my, another recorder in this pocket. Because it's too much that's coming through me. I need to document it. I can't miss it. I have dozens and dozens of hours of plans that God's given me what to do. I'm like, why would he speak all that to me? Because I'm ready for it. And it needs to happen. And the clock is ticking. The time is going away every day. We're losing time. And what are we going to do about that? Put your hand on your head right now. Woo! And say, Father, illuminate my mind to your plan and purpose. Show me exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And add to me what I need to make it happen. In Jesus' name. Now i got to tell you one other practical thing. God won't make it happen for you. He won't. He'll let you do it. The, he the Bible says the he heaven is for the Lord. The earth is his footstool. <laughs> heaven is for the Lord. The earth I've given it to the children of men. You know there's a scripture that says that. The earth I've given it to the children of men. And you see wicked people that are running away with all kinds of industries and business. Even here in this town. That don't even know God. But rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Hallelujah. I, I tell you, I rejoice over that more than anything. I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to hell with all these evildoers. I'm not going. Let's pray right now. Everybody, let's pray right now. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your gift of salvation. I just want to pray right now again. I just want to pray again right now. Just to be so much sure. Every day I want to confess you. You are my Lord. I receive you as my Savior. You are my Lord and King. And thank you for your gift of salvation. Forgive me of all sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I'm saved. Thank you for having my name in the book of life. And I'll forever be with you. Now, Lord, let me live the life on earth that's pleasing to you. That I can fulfill your will. That one day I'll hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on with me and enter into the joy of the Lord. Oh, yes. How many want to hear that? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood cleansing every person. Under the sound of my voice. Don't think that you don't need to confess the Lord. I prayed 20 years ago, you lazy thing. I pray every day, I don't care. Do you know when people give an altar call? When people give altar calls in meetings, I say the prayer again, I don't care. Why not? I'm not standing like this, I'm already saved. What do you mean? I don't... Are you kidding me? 
What if the Lord came today and he looked at you like, you don't even want to talk to me? You're not appreciative of what I've given? There's a thing called thanksgiving. We all have to work on it. We have to be grateful for what God has given us. Paul said in, in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything, not for everything, because there's some evil things that we don't need to have, but in everything in my life, I give thanks to the Lord for his goodness to me. Hello? Is it Psalm 118? I think it is somewhere. It says, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Wow. His mercy is, has come to us and I, I'm, I'm so grateful for that. In Jesus' name, Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord. Now, uh, uh, let, me, let me get into the next point now. The, um, the fact of the matter is that many in the church are lazy. They, they depend too much on, well, God's just going to work it out. He may not. Hello. And he's not going to do it by himself. If he called you to do something, why is he going to do it for you? It's for us to work. When the Lord touches you with his fire, you'll want to work like a crazy man. 24 hours a day. I don't understand time zones. I don't understand sleep patterns. I don't understand. It's good to have a regimen, you know? You know, people say this, you know, go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time. These motivational, I'm like, shut up. Who are you to tell me what to do? I know what I'm doing. Hello. You should go to bed at this time. You should wake up at this time. You should make your bed. You should clean your room. You should. I'm like, that's nice, man. But you know what? You can also have somebody do that for you if you're busy. Every time I go to the supermarket myself, I feel disturbed. And I'm a grown man, okay, obviously. I, I, but I feel like I shouldn't be doing this. The more I can have people doing everything, I'm at that point in my life. Uh, I want people to do everything. Everything that's not my job, I want someone else to do their job. My job is the word. Yeah? I told some of my people, we're having another meeting this afternoon. I said, I said, look, all these logistics of things, I'm not fooling with that. I'm speaking somewhere in the morning, and then I'm coming, and I'm going to come right into the studio. We're going to go right into the Word. Don't talk to me about hospitality and logistics. Y'all handle that. That's not my work. Can I give you a Bible for that? Acts chapter 6, yes? The apostles got worn out because they were doing too many things themselves. And the Lord rebuked them and said, you need to be in the word and prayer and ministering my power to people. So what was the solution? To raise up deacons. Hello, the diaconate, the Greek word, diaconate, diaconate. D-I-A-C-O-N-A-T-E, the diaconate, the, what we call the deacons. And these people had... Qualification responsibilities. They had to be of good report, meaning they're holy living. They're straight people. They're wise. They're clever. They love God. And they're filled with the Holy Ghost and His wisdom. Now you got somebody like that, now you can appoint them to, to work. I know one man of God, great man of God. He's even in this city. Dear friend of mine. Great father in the land. Mighty apostle. He shows up, all his people are there, everything is arranged, all he does is walk in, he pulls the car up to the door, gets out. Sometimes they put a red carpet like this. They, they'll roll it out, certain churches, you know, and they have all his bodyguards and deacons. Um, let me not say bodyguards, it sounds, it sounds funny. Servants, okay? Because he's a real man of God. Everyone, and they do everything. They do the sound. They do the, he has one man, a friend of mine, Really great man of God. One of his relatives. I think it's his wife's sister's husband. Yes? So he's in the family. His job is to show up and carry the, the bishop's microphone in a, in a case. Like, he holds it like this. So when, the, when he's going to speak, the man comes up, gives him the microphone. He does the meeting for an hour, prays for everybody. Everybody's falling under the power. He finishes the meeting. He gets in the car and he goes to do another meeting. 
And you wonder why he's on top. You wonder why he has the biggest church in, in Nairobi. And he does. In fact, right now while I'm speaking here, he's got 12,000 people sitting listening to him preach. Right now. 12,000 people crammed into the building. I was there, I prophesied, he had me speak. I spoke from 10, 10 times or more, 12, I think 12 times in the last year and a half. Prophesy these things. This is going to be expanded. He's expanded the church. He's bought thousands of more chairs and people come and fill them up. Why? Why? Because he has a system in place. He told a testimony and he started praying when he had 500 people, or three, 300, 400 people, and he said, God, we need to have a church of a thousand. We need to have a church of a thousand. And the Lord spoke to him and said, I can't give it to you now. He said, you're too angry. He's his words. You're too angry. There's still some things you got to sort out in your heart. All the warfare, all the attacks, all the... He says, let's fix that, then I'll, I'll give you more. Management of the life. Management of your heart. Management of your mind. Management of a system of operation around you will bring increase. Oh, yeah. Then he, he, the Lord gave him a thousand. Then he started praying for five thousand. The Lord granted it. Then he started praying for ten thousand. Church of ten thousand. The Lord granted it. But you look, I look at the man. He's there. He's a father. He's so full of love. He's selfless. He's kind. He's a giver. Another thing is you got to be a giver. I got I to talk about this. You have to be a generous giving person if you want God to bless you. Now if you want to be a crook and steal and cheat and lie and be a con artist. Hello? You do that yourself. But you'll go to hell. And you'll live a terrible life on the earth. Let me tell you something that God's, God has his prophet here doing. I've a, I'm arresting every con man in the land. Amen. And they're being put into the wilderness one by one. Some of them are being put into the grave. Because we don't need them around here. Liars, cheaters, even in the church. If someone's a con person and you figure them out, pray the judgment of God upon them that they be destroyed. They could get saved, hopefully for their own sake. But they can't do this damage to other people. Now, the, the corruption levels in the African governments, so much, how is it going to change? The people. The people. Look what's happening now. So God doesn't like all this corrupt stuff. But if you, it's another, it's another, it's an evil thing. But if you want to be blessed by God, you have to do things his way. <coughs> Number one thing he said is to be a giver. I don't care if you don't like that. Help yourself. Live your own life. I don't, doesn't bother me at all. People say, I don't want to give, I want to take. Good. Live a, st a stingy, poor, messed up life. God won't even help you. Hello? He won't. According to the word of God. Proverbs 11.25 says the generous person will become like a well-watered garden. Their life will become watered and blessed and fed and grown up by God. Because they're generous. If you don't give, I ask the Lord every day, and sometimes I, don't, I, I feel disturbed because I want to give more things. I want to do more things. Because Genesis 8.22, I keep seeing the verse in my mind, and I see it in my phone. When it's 8, 8 a.m. and 22 minutes, when it's 8 p.m. and 22 minutes, I see the numbers of the phone, and I think of the scripture. All day long, I see the numbers in the, in the clock in my phone. I screenshot them. I'm a, very, I'm a very unusual person. I actually screenshot them so I could look at them again. 11, 11, I like that number. You know the root of 11, 11, biblical numerology, I don't have, we don't have time to get into that. It's tied to tremendous flourishing in life and great prosperity, even financial abundance. Then the next minute, 11, 12, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence taken by force. Hello? Hello? John the Baptist until now. God 
said that you should be aggressive and take things by force. I think of the scripture. 8.18, 8 p.m. and 18 minutes. 8 a.m. and 18 minutes. I am the Lord that God that gives you power to get wealth and to establish my covenant. 2.26 is Ecclesiastes 2.26. 2.26 a.m., 2.26 p.m. Ecclesiastes 2.26. It says, God gives the job to the sinner to gather and collect things that those things can be given to the one who's good before God. 10.19, money answers all things, Ecclesiastes. Hello, come on. When it's 10.19, I'm like, whoo! When it's 10.22, three minutes later, 10.22, ha! Proverbs 10.22, the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and has no sorrow. Oh, hallelujah! Amen! 5.12, oh, I love it. Psalm 5.12, he surrounds us with favor like a shield. Oh, yes! And Revelation 5.12, he gives us power and riches and wisdom and strength and glory, honor, and blessing. That came from the Lord to us. For what? That we could take dominion. 126, Genesis 126, I made you after mine own image and after mine own likeness. And that I would cause you to have dominion over everything on the earth. When you know the word, John 831, John 831, if you're my disciples, indeed, you continue in my word, then you're my disciples. Next, next minute, 832. <laughs> it's a good exercise to, to, to memorize scriptures, right? And to repeat them. If you want a successful life, you got to be filled with the word, man. Oh, yes. 832, next one. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. 316, oh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. 1123, speak to the mountain, doubt not, it'll be removed. Next minute, 1124, a.m. or p.m. The things I want. Pray for them and believe I receive them and I'll have them. Next minute, 1125, I forgive everybody. Let me tell you something about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a gift that God gave us for us. Forgiving somebody does not absolve them from their guilt. It only frees you from them. That's why I forgive, because it's a gift. Some people have done such evil things, enemies and horrible people, evil people. How can you forgive such a person? Why? Because you can't let what they did affect you. You have to be above that. So when you forgive, you, re you don't release them from judgment. That's their own issue. It's a different thing altogether, but it releases you from them. Now I'm free. Don't carry grudges. Don't hate people. Did Jesus say in John 13, was it John 13, 33, 32? There's no 13 except on the uh, British clock, which I don't use. I use 1 to, t 1 to 12. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> 13, we don't see it in the... But 13, 32, 33, I believe it is in John, said, I give you this new commandment that you love one another. Woo! Jesus said, by this you'll know that you're my disciples because you have love one for another. So the love of God, Romans 5.5, 5, is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Love, power, forgiveness, victory. How many times did the Bible talk about victory? We need to do a study on that. How many scriptures are there in the Bible about victory? You know, I'm writing another book. And I have one of my books here. Praise the Lord. But anyway. Uh... I'm writing another book on the scriptures of judgment against evildoers. Woo! You, you can't imagine how many times in the Bible we see that God will judge somebody that's wicked. <coughs> now what does that do for somebody? What does it do? It helps you be free from them. <coughs> Lift your hands. Let's pray. God, 
is challenging all of us because he doesn't want us to stay the way we are. One thing I found out, one thing I found out about God, he loves us too much to leave us the way we are. I'm going to finish in 60 seconds. He loves us too much to leave us the way we are. When he challenges us to change, he's trying to help us, not hurt us. When you see something doesn't go right in a certain way or situation, as far as connections, relationship, environment, atmosphere, and all of that, don't shrug it off. Say, no, God is challenging me to build a better thing. Because he'll only promote you as you manage things well. The farmer or people that till the land or build uh, buildings on top of land, they can only do it by action because they had the dream and then they went to actually do it. So everything increases in our life through the law of use, the law of production. Hello. How many are ready to get busy? Have I challenged you a bit that I've done my job? Lift your hands, everybody. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Kabro Shakaya. Farantele Get busy about the Father's business. Jesus was even 12 years old. Young men, 12. And he stayed over there. And the, fam and the mother and father went that way. For Joseph, the husband of Mary. Not the he wasn't the father of Jesus. And they looked for him and didn't see him. And they found him and they were annoyed. And he said, Mom, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? He was already, he'd already made it up in his own mind that he was on the mission that God had at 12 years old. That's the premise that any young person could start doing anything. Like my little Ethiopian friend. How, I got to find out how old he is. He's a young boy. A young guy. He's already like... <clears throat> The nature is in him. He'll be a great man. He'll be a great, he'll be a great one. That one. Oh, oh. He's, he's, already, he's already got it. Now find out what his gift is. Yeah? And steer him in that direction so his energy goes in the right direction. Another thing is what, you, what angers you and irritates you is a sign that you're supposed to change something. You're not supposed to leave it the way it is. So get busy. Father, I release the favor and glory over people here that they could begin to cha change things in their world from today. What did I prophesy? This week, you're going to begin to see miracles, yeah. phone calls, supernatural connections, yeah. direction, visions you'll have from God. He'll show you what to do. If you can get one of these, I, I would recommend it. I think I bought this in Nairobi. I don't know where I bought this one. Did I get, where did I get this one? I don't know how much these cost, but you turn it on and you record yourself. Anytime you get ideas and you just speak into it, then you could drop them into your laptop or your hard drive, whatever. Now you have a record of everything that you've, that's come through your mind. Don't think of something and just let it go to the air and not do anything about it because God works by action. He promotes you by action. Things done. You know, in closing, Jesus said what? Well done. Well done. So, someone say that with me. Well done. well done. Meaning you did it. But if you didn't do it, he can't say that. Hello? Lift your hand and say, Lord, I must get busy about your business now. Help me do it. Activate me. Let me go into motion. Starting today in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I love you. More later. God bless you. Thank you. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward.
Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed. You can send your love offering. You can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.